Hi everyone, we're going to continue in chapter 6 to talk about using chemical formula as a conversion factor. We've talked about how to convert from moles to a number of particles using Avogadro's number. We've talked about how to use molar mass to convert between moles and mass. And now we're going to look at the actual chemical formula as our conversion factor. So a chemical formula is just the formula telling you how many atoms that are in a particular compound or molecule. That particular formula actually gives you ways to convert between the compounds and the atoms. So for example, we know that a bicycle has two wheels. And so as a result, that's a relationship between the number of wheels to the number of bicycle. In this analogy, the bicycle is like your compound. And then the wheels is like the atoms that make up the compound. If I know I have 25 bicycles, for example, there's two wheels per bicycle. So the bicycles will cancel. That tells me there's 50 wheels. That's hopefully simple and intuitive example to explain how atoms and compounds relate to each other. So now we're going to look at an actual example. So H2O is the formula of the compound. And in this case, we know that there's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom for every H2O molecule. So for example, if I have 10 H2O molecule, that immediately tells me that I have 20 hydrogen atoms and 10 oxygen atoms. And again, I'm just multiplying things by 10 here because there's 10 H2O molecules. So very similar to that bicycle example earlier. If I have 5,000 of these H2O molecules, that means I have 5,000 times two since there's two hydrogen atoms. So that means 10,000 hydrogen atoms and 5,000 oxygen atoms. Now, if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd H2O molecules, that means I have two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms, and then I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms. Okay, now you can see where I'm going with this because 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, of course, is equal to one mole. So that means if I have one mole of H2O, I'm gonna have two moles of hydrogen atoms, and then one mole of oxygen atom. The formula that we have here gives us the relationship to individual atoms. So one molecule is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. But we can also express that as a mole relationship, which is a lot of molecules, right? Specifically 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So the same formula would say one mole of H2O is equal to two moles of hydrogen atom and one mole of oxygen atom. Now, how does this relate to mass? Now we're bringing our molar mass. One mole of H2O, and you can look this up in the periodic table, you'll find that the molar mass is 18 grams per one mole. And so that's why one mole of H2O has 18 grams. Now that 18 grams is made up of the mass of hydrogen and oxygen. There's two moles of hydrogen atoms. We again use molar mass. Each hydrogen is one gram per mole. That's the molar mass. And so that means there's two grams of hydrogen. There's one mole of oxygen atom in water. So one mole times the molar mass of oxygen, which in this case is 16 grams per mole. So that gives us 16 grams of oxygen atom. And the two numbers has to add up to the 18 grams because the compounds are made up of the elements. So there's two relationships you can have. Relationship with the number of atoms, which could be expressed as individual or as moles. And then there's also a mass relationship, which we show in this last part. Let me do another example with a more complex formula, which in this case is going to be Al2SO43, aluminum sulfate. This is an ionic compound because it's made up of metal and non-metal in one formula unit. Remember, that's the unit we would use if we're talking about ionic compounds. In one formula unit of aluminum sulfate, I have two aluminum ions and I have three sulfate ions. So if I have 10 formula units, then it's just going to be 10 times whatever each of the number is. So 10 times 2 is going to be 20 aluminum ions and 30 sulfate ions. If I have 5,000, so 10,000 aluminum ions, 15,000 sulfate ions. If I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, well, it's going to be 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum ions, three times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sulfate ions. Well, why do I choose that specific number? Because that's equal to one mole, right? So that means that there's two moles of aluminum and three moles of sulfate ions. How do I get the mass of 
one mole of aluminum sulfate, I would take one mole aluminum sulfate, and I would use the periodic table to calculate my molar mass. You'll find that it's 342, so it's 342 grams of aluminum sulfate in one mole. Similarly, like the water example earlier, I'm going to have to figure out how many moles of each ions we have. We have two moles of aluminum, so we're going to figure out two moles of aluminum times the molar mass of aluminum ion. Well, the mo molar mass of aluminum ion is the same as the molar mass of aluminum, about 27 if you round it. So then this becomes 54 grams of aluminum ion. Sulfate, we have three moles according to our table. So three moles of sulfate ion times the molar mass of sulfate. Again, you just need to add those up. One sulfur, four oxygens, that adds up to 96 grams per mole, you end up getting 288 grams of sulfate ions. Okay, so you can see that the calculation is the same whether we're doing covalent or we're doing ionic compounds. Now, I'll just do one more example here. So let's try number B right here, okay, which is how many oxygen are in three and a half grams of KClO4. Start with our KClO4, right, potassium perchlorate, we need to convert that to number of moles because the formula is a relationship of number of moles. So we always have to convert back to moles. We're gonna first have to multiply this with our molar mass, right? Molar mass is 138.55 grams per mole. Again, you can do this through the periodic table. So just to be clear here, this is KClO4 which is the compound, and so that's how that cancels. Now I'm gonna to have to multiply this with something that would cancel out my mole of KClO4 and take me to oxygen. So it's gonna be a relationship between oxygen and KClO4. Well, given the formula, there is four oxygen for every one KClO4. And so that's gonna cancel out with this one right here, okay? So now that I have the number of moles of oxygen, the last step I need is to take that and convert it to the actual atoms of oxygen. I would need to take moles to atoms of oxygen. Well, this is just given by Avogadro's number. So 6.03 atoms to one mole, and that's gonna cancel that out. With correct sig fig, this should give you 6.1 times 10 to the 22 oxygen atoms.